Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to go over a challenge problem related to cardio, which we learned about in the last two videos. And then we're going to look at some exceptions to the cardio uh, rules. Because of course in chemistry, there's always exceptions. All right, so let's start with a challenge problem. And remember, um, in the previous two videos, we were going through the acronym CARDIO. So we were comparing two acids or, you know, two molecules and trying to figure out which one was more acidic. So what we did was we showed what the conjugate bases were for those acids, and then we compared those conjugate bases using CARDIO. And remember, C stands for charge, A stands for atom, R stands for resonance, DI stands for dipole induction, and O stands for orbitals. Now, your textbook, again, uses a slightly different acronym. Uh, it uses ARIO, I think. So we just added a couple of other terms in there. Um, so you can use the textbook's method, but this one, I think, is a little bit easier. Okay, so let's compare two molecules. So the first one has two carbons, an oxygen and a hydrogen, so an alcohol group. And then on the second carbon, there are two fluorines. And then in our second molecule, it's very similar. So we have two carbons, an alcohol group, but the fluorines are on the first carbon. And remember to show lone pairs for now. Um, as we go further into OCHEM, we'll stop showing the lone pairs, but for now, let's keep them um, just for our own learning purposes. Okay, so the question is, which one of these molecules is more acidic? So if you want to try this on your own first, feel free to pause the video and remember to compare the conjugate bases of these two molecules. Okay, so let's go over this problem together. So let's start by drawing the conjugate bases. So let's assume a base came in and took the hydrogen on each of these molecules. So we would be left with an extra lone pair oops, <laughs> on each oxygen. And remember that if an oxygen has three lone pairs, it is negatively charged. So now let's compare these conjugate bases. And we're going to start with C, which stands for charge. All right, so is there any difference in the charges? No, they're the same. So they both have negative charges. Uh, what about the next letter, atom? So the negative charge is on an oxygen in both molecules, so they have the same atom. So now we'll move on to resonance. Do either of these molecules have resonance structures? So remember there are some resonance patterns um, for instance, you might have a uh, negative charge next to a sigma bond, next to a pi bond, or you might have a positive charge next to um, a sigma bond and a pi bond, for instance. But here, we don't have that. We just have a negative charge next to a single bond, which is next to more single bonds. So there are no resonance structures for either of these conjugate bases. So now let's look at the next couple of letters, dipole induction. So 
So do these molecules have dipole moments? Yes, so those fluorines are very electronegative, right? So we have dipole moments drawing electrons towards those fluorines. And those are kind of approximate dipole arrows. <laughs> they might be slightly askew. Um, but the main idea here is that electron density is being drawn away from oxygen towards those fluorines. Okay, so is it more stabilizing to have the fluorines closer to oxygen or further away from oxygen? And remember, if oxygen can share its negative charge or its electrons with other atoms, that will stabilize the molecule. So is it more stabilizing to have those fluorines closer or further away? So it's more stabilizing to have the fluorines closer to oxygen because then they can more easily uh, draw electron density away from oxygen. Now, the fluorines on the right are a little further away, so oxygen isn't going to feel that effect as much. Um, but on the left-hand side, those fluorines are much closer, so they can more easily draw electron density away from oxygen. All right, so let's write that out. So the left-hand molecule um, has F closer to O, and that stabilizes the negative charge on oxygen. Or I guess we could also say it stabilizes the negative charge on the conjugate base. Okay, so if we go back and look at our original molecule, oh, I might have ruined my drawings here. Let's see, Let's see if I can redraw them. So I'll draw the hydrogens back in. So looking at our original molecules, um, the molecule on the left is more acidic due to the fact that the dipole induction is stronger. So the conjugate base is more stable. All right, so let's talk about some exceptions to the cardio rules. So let's look at two molecules and we'll compare them again. So let's look at ammonia and acetylene, which has a triple bond between two carbons. And we have looked at acetylene before. And I'll actually write the names here beneath each molecule. So now let's draw out what happens when these two molecules react with a base. So if you want to pause the video and draw the products, feel free. And then when you unpause, we'll go over them together. Okay, so let's draw the products for ammonia's reaction with a base. So that base is going to grab onto a hydrogen, and then I'm just going to show that the electrons that are shared are going to end up on nitrogen. 
So we'll end up with NH2, and nitrogen will have an extra lone pair. So in that process, nitrogen gained an electron, so it becomes negatively charged, and that is the conjugate base. And then we'll have the conjugate acid as well as our other product. Now for um, acetylene, the same thing happens. The base grabs onto a hydrogen. The shared electrons are left on carbon. So carbon gains an electron and becomes negatively charged. And our other product is the conjugate acid. Okay, so remember we're comparing the conjugate bases and their stability. So let's go through cardio again. So one is charge. Do they have the same charge or different charges? They have the same charge, so we can rule that out. So next is atom. Okay, so the negative charge is on a nitrogen in our first conjugate base, and it's on a carbon in our second conjugate base. So we're comparing nitrogen and carbon. Okay, so normally we want the negative charge to be on a more electronegative atom. So which atom is more electronegative, nitrogen or carbon? Nitrogen. Okay, so that would mean that the NH2 conjugate base is more stable, but this is where the exception comes in. Remember when we talked about acetylene previously, we used it in the example for orbitals and why orbitals are important. So let's look at the orbitals, or uh, let's try to identify the hybrid orbitals for nitrogen versus carbon. Okay, so what is the hybridization of nitrogen in NH2? So it has two hydrogens and two lone pairs for a total of four electron groups. So its steric number is four, so it is sp3 hybridized, okay? And what about this carbon? What is the hybridization of that carbon? So it's bonded to a carbon, and then it has a lone pair for a total of two electron groups. So its steric number is two, so it is sp hybridized. Now remember when we talked about orbitals, we said that if electrons are closer to the nucleus, that will stabilize the conjugate base. And the same thing happens here. So the negative charge or the extra electron on carbon is in an sp orbital. And remember, sp orbitals are really short. So the electron is much closer to the nucleus. Whereas in the sp3 hybridized nitrogen, that sp3 hybrid orbital is much longer. So the electron is further away from the nucleus. So let's actually draw a picture again, just kind of showing what that might look like. So again, if we have an electron in an sp orbital versus an sp3 orbital, the electron is much closer to the nucleus in the sp orbital. So this is one of those cases that um, kind of don't follow the normal rules, right? Because we normally would assume that, oh, the negative charge is on nitrogen, that's more stable. But when we compare these two bases, it actually turns out that the conjugate base of acetylene is more stable due to its sp hybridization. 
So let's just write down below, nitrogen is more electronegative. I'll just abbreviate that as EN. So nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, but the orbitals take precedence. So again, this is one of those rare cases where the atom is superseded by the orbitals. So in most cases, you can follow the cardio rules, but you know, just be aware that there are exceptions to that rule. Okay, so I'll stop the uh, lecture here because in the next video, we're going to go over how to identify the most acidic proton on an acid. So most molecules that we've looked at have had multiple hydrogens. How do you know which one the base is going to grab onto in an acid-base reaction? So we'll go over that um, in the next video. So I will see you then.